This is the second of the video sequences on problem solving with electrostatic forces. The first one focused on the creation of free body diagrams for situations. This is the second in that series, so it presumes you've already seen those free body diagrams or familiar with them. So if you haven't, you may want to go back to that first uh, clip. Um, otherwise, uh, continue on, stage two, where we create vector diagrams based on the free body diagrams. The second stage is to create a vector diagram for the charges based on the free body diagram that you've created. And in the process of doing this, we want to pay attention. We're trying to create the net force vector. That's often um, the ultimate tool we're going to need in solving these problems. So this was the free body diagram that we had in our last scenario. In order to create a vector diagram, we need to add these vectors tip to tail. Now just so you can see it clearly, I'm not going to put them right over top of each other, although technically I guess you should. Uh, just to make it clear, we see we're adding them tip to tail. Our resultant net force vector would be from where we start to where we finish. So you see that the positive 50 microcoulomb charge should be pushed to the left slightly. Repeating that process for the negative 10 microcoulomb charge, our net force vector would be, by adding the vectors together, would now be something to the right the negative 10 microcoulomb charge would have a net force towards the right. Now remember, we didn't work this one out um, last time, whether the uh, red or the blue uh, vector should be larger. Um, arbitrarily, I've drawn it slightly larger, so we'll be able to check and see what that turns out to be. But if you didn't have an intuition, you may go through a problem where this net force is unknown. You're not quite sure. And then as you work through the calculations, you, you may get an affirmation of, of some intuition or idea that you had. So this is now stage two uh, in our problem solving. We'll create a vector diagram by drawing our vectors tip to tail and the net force vectors from where we started to where we finished. Let's see how that turns out. I've got a computer simulation that illustrates what would happen to these three charges. So at the very beginning, you can see the size of the net force vector uh, illustrated down here at the bottom. So you'll see that, for example, for the orange charge, the net force should be about 0.11 newtons. And you can see from the two vectors, the one to the left here is larger than the one to the right. So we should get a net force on that orange charge moving it to the left. Over here on the green charge, we see the force to the right is a little bit larger than the one to the left. And the net force on that charge would be 0.078. And the one we weren't sure about, the net force is very small. Those two forces are quite close to each other in magnitude, but they're not quite exactly the same. So it'll be interesting to see how that one turns out. So let's advance the simulation and see what direction these charges actually do move. So notice closely the orange charge is accelerating to the left. It's getting closer to the negative green charge. So the forces between them are getting much, much larger. They're accelerating even faster as that distance gets smaller until eventually these two charges will collide and those electrostatic forces get really, really quite large. So it's sort of interesting to see that play out. But if we back up in electrostatics, the key word is static. We're assuming the charges are stationary to begin with and we're analyzing their initial condition. So that gives us a picture um, that our analysis turned out right. So let's look at the more complicated situation where we're going to create a vector diagram based on this two-dimensional free body diagram we've done with charges before. If we look at the 40 microcoulomb charge first, we have the two forces we need to combine together. We add the two vectors tip to tail. Our net force will be from where we started in this vector diagram to where we ended. So it would be in a direction just slightly west of north as shown here. So that net force vector will be the direction that that positive 40 microcoulomb charge would accelerate or move um, given the, the, the chance to be released. A uh, vector diagram for the 10 microcoulomb charge or negative 10 microcoulomb charge. So we draw the two vectors down here at the bottom. We need to add the vectors tip to tail. Our resultant vector, which is the net force, will be from where we started to where we finished. So the vector in this case would be somewhat to the west of south. That net force vector, again, we'll move on to the diagram just as a reminder, that's the direction we would expect the negative 10 microcoulomb charge to move or accelerate um, should it be released. And finally, let's build the vector diagram on the positive 30 microcoulomb charge. So again, we take those two vectors, 
from the free body diagram, we combine them, so add them tip to tail. And the resultant vector, or the net force, will be from where we started to where we finished, shown here, so just very slightly to the north of east. Again, we'll transfer that onto our diagram as a reminder to ourselves that that is the direction we would expect the 30 microcoulomb charge to move, or accelerate, um, if it was given the chance. So, in our problem-solving process, we have some expectation of how this should turn out. Let's take a look at the simulation of this situation and see if uh, our vector analysis is correct. So initially, we just see the charges as they appear and notice that the vectors that we drew um, are matching what we had in our vector analysis. And if we watch closely down here on the um, orange charge, uh, notice the path that moved was slightly to the north of east. And if we backed up the video, you could choose to focus on any of the three charges and you would see the initial motion that it had uh, was in the direction of the net force vectors that we chose. Again though, in electrostatics, we're interested in the situation where they are actually stationary. So we'll back up the simulation at the beginning and that's the situation we'll begin our analysis on. So each of those vectors do match up if you look closely back to your free body diagram. I uh, encourage you to pause the video at this point just to do a cross check, uh, but they do match. So our vector analysis at this point is correct. So our last step, the third stage, is to be able to actually calculate what these net forces would be on each of these um, static particles. So stage three, um, and that will be in the next sequence of the video coming up. So feel free to exit this point, and if you're still interested, please continue on into the next screencast in the sequence.